it's up to us if we want to reunify and i think that it happens on an individual level when mm. one person says they want to connect with everything else they have that opportunity this episode is proudly sponsored by Ciempo. many of you watching have heard of tristan harris and the center for humane technology We've done many episodes on the perverse incentives around screen time and critically thinking about what balance truly maximizes our potential. Siempo built a new smartphone interface and browser extensions as the new home screen for humanity. They're at a crossroads looking for a new CEO to come in or to partner with a larger organization that has the resources to bring this incredible technology to the world. They've built a high integrity foundation and are teed up for something wonderful. If interested, message the founder Andrew Dunn at andrew at cmpo.co. More info is in the bio. Thanks everyone and enjoy the episode. What's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host Alan Sakian. We're on site at the Transformative Technology Conference for our second annual partnership with them. We are now going to be talking with Brandon Howard. What's up, Brandon? Not much. Doing good. How are you? Thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. So pumped for this. <laughs> me too. I'm excited. I know. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Euphoria. I'm excited about that. Before we jump into that, we got to ask you some of our questions that we ask all of our guests. Are we really all one? <laughs> well, I definitely believe that that answer is up to everyone. I personally feel connected to everyone. Uh, I'm almost driven by a sense of responsibility for my contribution to everyone. And that level or that, you know, path of thinking helps. It helps me. Um, it's helped me understand the past. It helps me experience the present and not worry about the future. I could, I could go on for hours, so. <laughs> um, I, you know, whether it's science, whether it's spirituality, whether it's, you know, everybody's definition of common sense, um, people feel connections and you have to go with your feelings. I think ignoring your feelings is like cutting off, you know, some of your best resources for, for living and thriving. Absolutely. I love how you gave these two sides to the same coin, the science and the spirituality. Marrying those two seems like the most important, one of the most paramount things that we can possibly do to ensure a uh, abundant and prosperous world and future. Um, I want to ask you next about your feelings of uh, interconnectedness. Has this been like um, feelings of of the drop rejoining the ocean, unconditional love, deep present moment? Has this been around um, uh, uh, ego death, you know, all of these different, so t t take us through some of your, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's a long story, but it started when I broke my back or I had, I was on the treadmill, I was running, I was getting in shape for a half marathon and I experienced a period of pain that I didn't have a lot of resources to combat with. Um, I wasn't going to be, I was denied surgery and pain meds were making me feel things I didn't enjoy feeling. It was actually like almost enraging me. And I noticed it because my wife was responding to it. And so that's what sort of got me on this journey. And it, it's required a lot of self-reflection about essentially my behavior. And then I had to dig into like why I was behaving certain ways, like what triggered that. And that helped me understand sort of how our subconscious makes 95% of our decisions. And that's driven by how we were raised and all the experiences we've had. So I've had to look back at each thing that sets me off and figure out what's the best way to combat that. And as I'm learning and understanding myself and understanding what other people have been through and understanding, you know, the connections between science and our bodies, it took me all the way back in history to the point where science didn't exist and everything was spiritual. And that's kind of where I saw how science took one route and spirituality took another. And going back to your topic of oneness, where we're at now is completely like, let's just call it specialized. <laughs> and there's so many schools of thought that all come back to one if we decide that we want to take it all the way back there. So if we've brought all these schools and a, a few of the speakers are mentioning it, that 
more the scientific disciplines need to communicate. And I think that once they start unifying and whoever starts to unify and trans tech is already doing it but you yeah. start unifying that science and that spirituality we're getting back to the way it was originally yeah. not that you have to commit to one thing but that you can understand the whole thing yeah yeah and then how about do you think that our most upstream issue for the reason why we have so many of the issues in our world is the illusion of separation that we lack that interconnectedness yeah, I think, I mean, we can get into mythology if you want to. Yeah, take us. Um, but there's this sort of, there's stories out there. Humanity has always been driven by stories. And stories are what help us connect to the world around us and to each other. And the stories that resonate the most with me are the ones that talk about how we we're all one like these ancient stories like you know atlantis is was like this myth that didn't exist like i grew up in south carolina it wasn't talked about at all and then you start hearing these little stories here and there and like it starts to add this curiosity but you know if you dig deep enough like the information is out there and it'll it will explain how there was this uh period where we were all one and we knew that we were all one and then regardless of what religion you look into, there was this separation. And that separation is what's driven us to the direction that we're, or the place that we're in now. And it's up to us if we want to reunify. And I think that it happens on an individual level. When mm. one person says they want to connect with everything else, they have that opportunity. So it's the priority of the drop rejoining the ocean that makes it so that the interconnectedness is able to thrive at the grand scale. The drop has to consciously go into the process of rejoining the ocean. Yeah, yeah. The yeah, I guess we're all we're all raindrops. We're all individual drops and, you know, if you want to stay in the clouds and be separate from the ocean, that's up to you. But, you know, the journey is the fall from the cloud. And the ocean is that soft landing that says, like, you're now where you were always supposed to be. Yeah. So I like that metaphor. Yeah, we've, we've even went uh, and, <laughs> and talked about how the process of birth is when you start dropping as the raindrop and that when you die, you're, you're the, when, that's when you join the ocean. Okay. Um, but uh, along the way, you have the ability to kind of ebb into the water cycle along the way if you can feel into it. If you choose those who feel it, know it, that style of of process i have um i have so many other thoughts around this i want to um but i, I do want to get into euphoria i want to ask you about what you're working on now um how can we and this actually kind of takes us into this process of trying to help people achieve the states of interconnectedness sure uh our approach my approach was sort of what spawned uh euphoria it was understanding that this is an emotional thing like i was raised to not express too many emotions and i had a lot to express you can ask my friends that i grew up with i was an emotional kid and that forced me to figure out how to balance it all but dealing with all these injuries made me realize that i was suppressing it all and if you don't mind reiterating your question because i was on a path and i don't want to get off of it <laughs> yeah yeah about how specifically euphoria does the uh, helps with interconnectedness sure so i wanted to uh, understanding that what i was going through was individual I, you know as i'm understanding these things i came home and i was giving my wife lectures on how like everybody was supposed to be and it was almost through those conversations that i realized that what i'm experiencing isn't what everybody else is experiencing and so when i was using euphoria in its early stages i realized that i had the flexibility to not only customize this experience for myself, but to let other people customize it for themselves. Everybody's had different experiences. Everybody has different needs. Yeah. And, you know, the one, one size fits all scenario doesn't work. It might work for a majority. It might work for a minority. But I wanted to create something that was completely flexible. Mm -hmm. And I'm also understanding that not everybody's ready for infinite options, infinite opportunities. You might need to give them options to choose from so the stage that we're at with euphoria is it's out there it's available and people can use it as they want to uh, what we want to do is help more people have access to it 
and when it comes to like you know new forms of technology they might not gravitate to something that says oh i can heal my emotions with sound like do i even need to worry about my uh emotions like is that really a thing um but i am seeing correlations between you know emotions and behavior and then the health impacts of those choices that people make so we wanted euphoria to give lots of people ways to to find their own solutions and then how do you figure out what is my appropriate personalized binaural meditation solution mindful solution well, I could ask you, like, yeah. what's bothering you? What's your emotional state? Or so, you, like, you prompt me to answer questions sure. via the service about what's bothering me or what's my state. Sure. So when you open the app, it'll ask you, how do you want to feel? Mm. And so if you can answer that question, then there's a whole host of uh, emotions that you can choose. Uh, bliss is the most popular one. And then, Interesting. Yeah, and then the next phase is um, what personal attribute do you want to boost? Your yourself, your ability to express yourself, uh, boost your focus, boost your your consciousness, boost your your vigor, your vitality. These are all parts of yourselves that if you don't know how to get into them, yeah. Euphoria can help you connect with it. And then the more you do this, and the more you realize just how in control you are the less you'll actually need you for you. So I wanted it to yeah. be, you know, a rainbow bridge of sorts. And then, so then walk us through, like, if I do select bliss, like, what am I prompted to do? So bliss, uh, the way we see it is more of like a consciousness experience. And so, you know, there's lots of feelings that you get when you feel bliss. And my version of bliss might be different than your version of bliss. And of the, you know, 29,000 people who have downloaded Euphoria so far, bliss is the most popular. But I think that everybody would have their own explanation of like how it feels, but it's always positive. And we designed Euphoria to only really include positive experiences. So that way people will recognize, do they feel good? If you feel good, then it's working. If something else makes you feel good, that's also working. But I wanted to make sure there were a lot less side effects. And with sound, you know, we're surrounded by sound and we're not even surrounded by healthy sound. So mm -hmm. I really feel positive that this is healthier than a lot of things that are out there. And then walk us through what you do when I do select bliss or when any of the users that you're talking about do select bliss. Like what do I experience through euphoria? What does it take me into? So I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use my mom as an example. So, you know, I watched my mom raise me. And I watched her go into companies where she has had to carry the weight of other people's responsibilities. And so I've seen like her deal with stress. And for her, it's, it, it might be more challenging to find happiness in different situations. But when I created Euphoria and gave it, a sh and gave it to her, she, she chose bliss and she mixes it with her sleep. And so some people might want bliss in the office. Some people might bliss, want bliss while they're relaxing. She wants bliss while she sleeps. And when she wakes up, she actually feels like she just had a great day. She feels like she had a great sleep. And she starts her day with this optimistic feeling that everything is fine. And, you know, these illusions of why she's not happy, she's recognizing them now as illusions that she just needs to change her perspective on. And so you give me a binaural experience that then catalyzes states of bliss right right so the frequencies that we use uh they're based on the solfeggio scale um and what's the scale called solfeggio Selfeggio. that's how i pronounce it i'm pretty sure it's italian yeah. <laughs> Selfeggio. Selfeggio. <laughs> um so it that scale was developed and again these gregorian monks were singing these tones to reach these sort of emotional states that they preferred and that particular frequency does trigger those types of emotions and the binaural the binaural part is more about shifting into uh, sleep mode or relaxation mode or meditation mode like that sort of physically gets you in your mind in the direction you want to go mm -hmm. um, the self tones are what trigger the different emotions so just hearing a particular note in a song like if you hear that high note that might be the reason you love that song when your favorite musician just yeah. hits it hard and you're like yes and you feel the connection between them between you like it's the right frequencies that seem um, 
it's the right frequencies that our bodies respond to. And, you know, that bliss frequency is, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it feels like magic, but now that we're understanding the science behind it and how it's triggering like parts of your, your brain and body and releasing hormones and, you know, we can understand how we're responding to these sounds. I like that example of, you know, why we even put on a jam in the first place is that we get to that moment where it's just triggering some sort of emotion or feeling for us that is profound and it's so important. And so um, we have different music for different ways we want to feel. And mm -hmm. so uh, I like then that you're able to identify what, you know, what is for me a blissful song maybe like a Silvegio scale might be similar for a majority of people it might be somewhat different for different people maybe some people don't necessarily resonate with this uh super blissful uh what you, what you may think is maybe maybe they want something that's super blissful that is only birds chirping and water absolutely uh, yeah absolutely because um if you look at there was a study done where they compared the music that we listen to traditionally and how music is tuned. And uh, the story behind that, uh, you know, it's probably a good place to talk about it. Um, it was established in Germany, like in the, I think the 20s or 30s, 1930s. And that, you can fact check that, by the way. <laughs> um, but we decided to tune music to the scale of A equals 440. Now, that was tested against the Selfeggio scale, where they chose uh, a popular frequency of 528 hertz. And you could see that the Selfeggio tone had a greater impact on our emotions, according to the tests that they ran with uh, the people in the trial. And so nature has a more positive impact than the music we create because we're tuning to the wrong notes. Mm. So if we change the notes that we tune to, we don't need to stop listening to birds, but we're getting what the birds are offering. We're getting yeah. what nature is offering because, you know, their notes do resonate with us on a deeper level. And um, I think that's sort of like the cloud of sound that we live in, whether it's traffic or construction or, you know, poorly tuned music. Like all this stuff has a psychological impact on us, whether we Absolutely. realize it or not. Absolutely. Yeah, we were just talking about that uh, a couple of days ago around this conversation about what aspects of uh, well-being today are actually lower than they were in the past. And this is very uh, contrarian to what so many um, people have been saying if t today is the best time to be alive. It's like this drum that people are beating over and over say again. positive. <laughs> and yet, like you just described, uh, I, we, we all know that our input stream that we constantly take in on a moment to moment basis being overly saturated with traffic, um, construction, all these things when you walk down in a metropolis makes us feel completely different. It makes me feel like I'm inside of the matrix. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I'm uh, in nature, and I'm deeply immersed in bird sounds, waterfalls, the leaves wind blowing in the, in the wind. Yep. I mean, it's just game over. I feel like I'm in interconnected beyond. Yeah, the matrix basically creates an environment of disconnection. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, I do think that that may be an aspect of our well-being that has actually decreased when we find ourselves in the matrix metropolises versus when we find we used to find ourselves more immersed deeply in nature. Yeah. I agree. And it's even the structure of buildings. Um, there was a TED talk on how sound can be used uh, or how you can construct things to promote better use of sound. And straight walls are not it. Uh, sound just bounces awkwardly off of it. And so in nature, that doesn't happen, probably because of its fractal nature. Mm. And so what we need to consider is how we construct our buildings, our rooms, our cities, uh, the, the machines that we use. I mean, there's all these studies about the, the ailments that construction workers have because of the vibrations that they're surrounded by. Yeah. And I don't know if that means changing what hammers are made out of or how gears grind or if we can augment the sound and vibration that these machines are giving off so that it, that it is at least healthier and how they're doing their constructions. And beyond that, if we're creating places that are healthier for us to be in, I think that we're going to feel a lot better. Yeah.
Yeah, this is paramount. It's that our built environments that we've chose to design are are not conducive towards uh, spiritual wholeness and well-being. Um, they're more um, oriented towards something that is unnaturally uh, has a proclivity towards unnatural rather than um, something that's way more like, like even just take take into account um, the the like basically every single building that we're in just that there's um, the idea of natural light is not even the first priority um, the idea of having a uh, plants and water and animals inside is not even first priority um, it's uh, it's about uh, like square feet footage uh and about productivity and about um you know any actually if you were to try and build things around productivity you would have natural light animals yes, plants yes. uh all those things as actually first because you would have a more productive if you could basically walk into a building um and have that building be basically like an office in the middle of the woods yeah that, that was the exact idea that's <laughs> popping into my head as you were like discussing all of that it's just like you like just you just drive down this long driveway into the woods and like the offices are under canopies and trees and animals are walking right through like yeah like i yeah. would love to work in that office like yeah. let's build that office yeah <laughs> wow like, <laughs> on that's such a game changer yeah i yeah. love that and it's it's you're absolutely right you're right on you're right you're spot on in my opinion like we're definitely on the same wavelength when it comes to the potential is out there and maybe that's why it's the best time to be alive right now because we have the resources to bring our ideas into fruition it's just you know the past several thousand years of us you know thinking that one way is best and maybe that was the way we needed to get to this point like there's a lot of infrastructure built and but it's like hard for us to fix it because it's it wasn't the best infrastructure so how do we augment the current infrastructure we have because it's probably way too expensive to like knock everything down and rebuild it and that's why cities seem to bounce from place to place like that city worked for a while and now we need to build new cities and new places and new ways and see if they can last even longer yeah, I, I I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> and um, we're literally talking about um, you know cities inside of the redwood cities alongside the coastlines, um, mm. and not cities the way that we currently see beach towns and stuff like that. But um, in the sense of like very very, um, the, the, what would it look like if you were to try and jump into like mixing together what like immediate return hunter gathering is with um the computational modernity of today like that would be what i would love to see some mix between those two things like me being able to live in a um in a in a, in a in a like in a very like primordial um environment um but that is still heavily um, has the ability to get interconnected into the um, internet grid uh, as I as I please, and like being able to ebb between those is just like you you, you literally like garden during the day between your shifts <laughs> on the internet, and then you at night you have a fire and look up at the cosmos without light pollution i mean it's like that th these are game changing yeah ways to build the future yeah you're speaking my shangri-la we here. are bro <laughs> we are this is a, a um but i it's it's all it's all possible and i think that you know given the systems that we have right now i think that you could have a hackathon and talk about you know what's a new way to build an office like in a remote place and i know my my idea would be almost like a log cabin type open office space where it is that throwback cabin in the woods so you feel like it's rustic um although i really don't want to cut down too many trees if we can avoid that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but so there's new materials out there but it can look like whatever we want because now we know how to like do that and we can find ways to do it safely and organically and um again like you know if it's hard for each individual to be one with each other i think that individuals are finding that it's a lot easier to be one with nature and so yeah. if we put ourselves in nature and then say how can we make nature how can we optimize this environment for us without 
doing harm, then, you know, <laughs> we just got to look at what's worked in the past. I mean, there's all these questions about 5G and like how safe is that? Yeah. Absolutely. Meanwhile, Tesla is putting electricity through the ground. And mm -hmm. I think that we should explore like, is that safe for the environment? Like are yeah. our plants thriving from this or, or what? But we need to take a, a smart approach to it. But you can, I mean, an on off switch for the internet, like in a remote place in the yeah. woods, because you're passing electricity through yeah, the ground. Yeah, like, yeah. It, yeah. to me, that's just why not try it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to know on the um, binaural beat side, especially for those that aren't familiar, um, walk us through what exactly that feels like. What is that? How do you end up creating something that can uh, auditorily stimulate states of consciousness? Do you mean what does it feel like for me creating that or what does it feel like for the person listening? Yeah, person listening. Um, I guess I've got to think about what is it like for for me when I listen. So And what is like the science itself behind like a binaural beat? Sure. So when it comes to binaural beats, uh your brain your your brain vibrates essentially and it measurably it vibrates at different, you know, bands of frequency. And when you're asleep, you're considered you're in delta stage. When you're um, you know, the next up for relaxation and meditation, that's like the theta range. Um and so it goes up to alpha and gamma. Essentially, um, the binaural B part, when that comes in, is creating a vibration that your brain is going to sync up with. So sympathetic vibration is what your brain does. And the binaural beats create that energetic environment for your brain to figure out, how, okay, how do you want me to vibrate? And so it just puts you there. It puts your brain where your brain is used to being. And so whether you're dealing with anxiety like you know yesterday i was all worried about the pitch that i had to give um i've been thinking about it for weeks and i was trying to get into that mental place of knowing that everything's going to be fine and so i adjusted my binaural beats to be in relaxed mode and that relaxed mode that theta mode has so many benefits you learn better when you're relaxed <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. Um, you learn better. Your blood pressure drops. Your heart rate like slows, mm -hmm. and like all these things that are your body naturally does. It's hard for you to force your brain to get you in that state, unless you have some other tool mm -hmm. to get you there. Now, there's other tools out there. I mean, you could breathe. You can meditate. You could just um, if you do yoga, or maybe for other people, it's running or exercise. So there's this whole spectrum that gets you in that right state of mind. Uh, but binaural beats allow you to just put on headphones and listen for 10 minutes. And then it gets all those processes moving in that direction. So it kind of catalyzes from the auditory centers of our nervous system, these feelings of calmness, interconnectedness, the decreases in blood pressure, heart rate. Sure. It's essentially you're triggering your, your endocrine system. The endocrine system. Okay. Right. So okay. when, when you're faced with something that stresses you out, your natural response is going to be for your uh, subconscious to use all your past experiences and decide what's the best approach for you. So if you're allowing your subconscious to decide how you want to handle a situation, how you want to handle a stress, uh, it might automatically just say like, all right, I'm scared of that. Let's release hormones that are designed to help us run from our problems. And if those problems are always just chasing you, you never get rid of that cycle of releasing negative stress related hormones from your sympathetic nervous system. Now you have a moment and that's sort of where I think that this um, zero point kind of is where you get to choose fight versus flight. Like I normally hear people say that it's fight or flight and that's just like one thing that you do like when you're scared. But for me it's you know, you can choose to run or you can choose to face it head on. And when you choose to face something, you start to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, and that helps you calm down and it helps you, you know, be in the moment to figure out what do you need to do to deal with the situation. And I played basketball. And so for me, I correlate that to the zone. And yeah. when you're in the zone, you see everything, you feel everything, everything feels natural, everything feels easy, and there's just no stress. Now, I played under a lot of stress, so I didn't experience the zone very much, but when you look at superstars, yeah. they stay in the zone, whether it comes naturally or they just know how to get there. And so f I so see So tech it, that triggers you into the zone. Yeah, that was my, that was, that was sort of a result of everything that I was doing. I, I initially came to binaural beats because 
I was experiencing pain and didn't know how to deal with it. And out of all those suggestions, like more sleep, more relaxation and meditation, I needed help with meditation. So I used binaural beats to get me into that meditative state of mind so I could experience the benefits and the hormones that get released and all the healing that happens. But I was surprised when I found out that the healing was actually breaking down all these subconscious behaviors that were leading me into unhealthy yeah. decisions. Yeah, that, that's, that's so good. That's, that's, that's so my good. journey. That's so good. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's as though once you do the tech that triggers us into these deeper interconnected states, that this, 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 if this effect also happens where we heal some of the most um, deepest parts of our psyche um, through that and it just it ends up just butterfly affecting into the rest of our lives right. we don't get triggered as easily we are able to um, more quickly reach interconnected states on our own mm -hmm. away from the tech as well yeah. um, it's just uh, it's profoundly uh, a butterfly effect oriented yeah. i i'm i'm I, I love i love how you how you put that i, I love that um I <laughs> use wanna, it as often as you want <laughs> yeah 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 this is good this is um uh, uh, euphoria app.com yep euphoria dot app dot com <laughs> one more time euphoria app.com yeah app.com yeah Okay. We're there. <laughs> U4EAapp.com, everyone. Yeah, check Got that it. out for sure. And that's on both of the major platforms. It's only on iOS. It's only on iOS. For yeah. Okay. I, I have navigated the world of entrepreneurship and fundraising and dealing with uh, existing industries and processes to go from my friends and family that understand and support and have been there for me and I wouldn't be here without them um, and they've allowed me to try to get the investment just to get it on Android and the yeah. other platforms and so we've actually had to take more of a business approach to figure out how to introduce this to more people and so we're trying to help corporations because of their motivations to you know reduce the stress and anxiety of their employees so they perform better yeah and so if we can get corporations to create customized versions of euphoria then that'll allow us to you know generate the revenue to build out the app so it's available for everybody on other platforms yeah yeah that's another good one i mean we were just talking to george from my feel and he's doing the process of working with um the uh with insurance and medical um yeah. and just diving right into 10,000 person companies and bringing the tech to them and i think that's a very interesting way to try and get transformative technologies into the world is through the pitch to corporations on productivity um but just in general that at the same time uh while i'm saying that i'm going like no alan no like that's, <laughs> no what <laughs> no like like, uh, like, don't get your app into uh, your transformative technology app. I mean, it, it's okay, but like, it's just like I, I also just like, you know, just say what's on your mind. If it gets trapped in there, you got more problems. Uh, more, <laughs> more like it's more like uh, <clears throat> uh, taking this to 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 companies that are already doing destructive things. Just to get the people that are there to uh, become more productive uh, versus. Um, trying to just get those old archaic companies to die so we can build the <laughs> new world um but maybe bringing transformative technology in does awaken people more and then they decide that what they're doing is shit anyway um so yeah i think <clears throat> it's funny <clears throat> that corporations typically have this like freedom to do things without worrying about consequences just from like a legal standpoint um and so it's almost as if like you've got you know, whether it's a toddler, a baby, a giant or whatever, like that size corporation has never had to self-reflect and it's not going to until the people inside self-reflect. And I think that, you know, any business that tries to do any business that's doing harm is setting itself up to sort of experience that corporate karma. <laughs> and so... I think that by I think naturally as the people inside the companies start to change, then the companies will start to change their motivations and they have so many resources to get things done that I think it's better for them to make those adjustments and provide for a better future or, you know, 
other companies are going to thrive and eventually replace because they're doing new things in new ways that are resonating with with the general population this phrase corporate karma yeah that's such an interesting one <laughs> Do, am i the only no somebody else has said that too i i don't think i've heard corporate karma yet i like that i just made that's my I first like time it. using it yeah that was that was good i like that one yeah and the corporate karma is hopefully what gets us to awaken more i see i see that as well i like that um just a couple quick questions on the way out do you think that humanity is a biological bootloader for digital super intelligence a biological bootload so like neo like uh is humanity's purpose to build digital super intelligence like artificial general intelligence oh um i think humanity's purpose is experience um we can get back into you know the the theory of one or or feeling that oneness and sort of the like whole the point of creation the whole point of creation yeah. and, and that's just it the point is creation and i think that you know, if you look at spirituality on a dimensional level, you know, there are higher dimensions and we're on level three and we seem to have created level two with digital um, and virtual reality. Like, sure, these are like 4D experiences, but we're experiencing through a 3D like body. And so, yeah, I think that it's about creation, but it needs to be creation with positive intent. So, yeah, are our, our, our bodies essentially designed to carry like spiritual energy like i completely believe that um and i think that that spiritual energy is what drives us to continue to want to create yeah the purpose of creation being creation yeah the becomingness the becoming more alive yeah expressing itself uniquely yeah because i have been expressing myself commonly like trying to like fit in be normal and I didn't have that insight to be original until you finally realized that not being original is harmful for you. So everybody has to give what they give what they have and hopefully have a good time doing it. And so long as intent is positive, you know, there's there shouldn't be a limit to what we're capable of. Yeah. And what do you think is the most beautiful thing in creation? Well, love is the easy answer. I mean, anything that can pull you push you drive you motivate you and you know how it works is incredible how it works is amazing how you feel you feel so much more when love is the awareness that you have um or I could say Xbox. <laughs> no, it's love. <laughs> I love video games. And I think that, you know, they create an environment for new experiences. And it allows your, for me, it allows my mind to, you know, create my own, what was that movie? Um, Total Recall, where you get to, like, just go do something different for a little while. You can get away from doing the same old, same old. And the more experiences you can create and, and that's what's great some of the real life experiences are like too expensive too far away like to meet people that have never left their city or their state like that's how i saw that there was so much more to the world and that's why i want to keep exploring it but you know in the meantime you know i can have like a little daily break <laughs> yeah 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 love an xbox yeah I I, I I vibe i vibe though because um I, this is made of atoms and the world of bits is just we can be gods in that world a little bit more we are gods here too but it's just so cool to design virtual worlds and immerse ourselves in them and that kind of process i'm a huge huge fan of but it can also be hard because then uh how much uh, have you mastered the the world of atoms prior to entering just the world of bits and then oh yeah, yeah we, yeah, we yeah. there's there's just way more for us to know and to explore and experiment on it's just uh it's just a matter of resources and i think that you know the transformative technology community completely gets that and we come together and we provide our individual contributions and that grows into deeper understandings for how atoms work and and what we can do with them. And I think that's going to transform how we live and it's gonna clearly transform everything we create. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on the show, Brandon. This has been a blast, I really appreciate you. I thank appreciate you. it. Thank, thank you, you for having me. This has thank been awesome. You. And uh, 
I can't wait to see more. I mean, your conversations. You. Have, yeah. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank I'm you. excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We'd love to thank hear your you thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Check out the links in the bio below to Brandon's work. Okay. Let me see if I can get this. Y U for the number E A app app.com. Perfect. Perfect. Boom. There we go. There we go. <laughs> and then you got that in the bio. Check that out. Also, um, check out the links to Transformative Technology Conference as well. Check out those links in the bio below to the community. Also, um, support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the spiritual leaders, the organizations around the world that you believe in in your communities. You can find all of our links to simulation in, our, in the bio below. PayPal, Patreon, cryptocurrency. You can design cool merch and get paid. All those links are below. And... Go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. We love you very much. Thank you for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Namaste. Namaste. Peace. <laughs>